Well, for more on China's markets and the economy, I'm joined from Hong Kong by Li Gang Lu. He's a chief economist for the Greater China region with the A and Z Research. Mr. Lu, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Well, let's start off with the market moves and China's benchmark Shanghai Composite closing down about 1.3 percent low on Wednesday. Still down, but, you know, considering previous sell-offs of around 8 percent, 7 percent, it's an improvement, wouldn't you say? Uh, what's your take? Well, I think there's a small technical point there. That is, uh, although PBOC cut reserve requirement ratio uh, on Tuesday, but uh, uh, reserve requirement ratio cut will not be implemented until September 6. So, in a sense, uh, for the market at this moment, the liquidity remains as uh, euro. So, this is the reason perhaps on Wednesday the PBOC injected the additional short-term liquidity through SLO to somehow boost the market. But so far, we have not seen the result. Uh, the other reason is that uh, perhaps the official intervention has more or less ended uh, together with not much macroeconomic fundamental to support a good market. This is the reason China's market is, is continuing to rot. Well, we, let's focus on that liquidity injection. As you say, the PBOC injecting 140 billion yuan, the equivalent of about $22 billion into the country's banking system. But how will this actually work? How will this money be channeled into the real economy? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this operation is done through uh, short-term liquidity injection, and uh, the money basically has uh, probably three months uh, to, the, to the banking system. The banks would have to pay back. So this is n a not a permanent liquidity injection. Uh, the reserve requirement ratio cut actually is a permanent uh, uh, liquidity injection, a 50 basis uh, uh, triple R card will inject liquidity at around 650 billion renminbi. So we expect that that type of action will have a big impact on the banking system. Once the banks have the additional liquidity, if they don't lend it out, uh, they will suffer loss. So this will help spur uh, a Chinese bank lending to give some boost to the real economy at this moment, which has been quite sluggish. Well, it seems to me that the People's Bank of China could be caught in a place where it's now expected to take action in reaction to market volatility. Do you think that the PBOC's actions increase confidence or erode confidence in the markets? I would think that the PBOC's action increased market confidence rather than decreased uh, market confidence. The reason is that uh, if you look at uh, key macroeconomic indicators, such as the PMI released uh, earlier by Tsai Xin, which was quite uh, low, the lowest since March 2009, uh, meanwhile, we expect the official PMI to come out in 1st of September to be below 50 as well, suggesting that uh, China's real economy is slowing down. So PBOC's action could uh, help boost uh, market confidence. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that uh, monetary policy easing alone is not sufficient to give a boost to, to the Chinese economy. China will have to engage in fast uh, capital market liberalization. For example, although interest rate at this moment is quite low, a lot of firms and the local government cannot issue debt with ease because of the regulation. So I think uh, this type of market entry uh, you know, uh, reform will allow Chinese firms to tap into the capital market more easily. Right. More easily, as a result, we probably will see firms' funding constraint, local government funding constraint, could be somewhat solved. Uh, in the remaining part of the year, we may see a small, modest uh, rebound in the economy. 
Mr. Liu, you're an economist, and many analysts are saying that there is a big discrepancy between the fundamentals of China's economy and investor sentiment. I mean, keeping in mind that China's stock market is not a big part of the Chinese economy, certainly not as big a part as, for example, the U.S. markets plays in the U.S. economy. And many are saying that the market doesn't reflect the fundamentals of the economy and that the crash is not a proxy for the real economy. Do you agree with that? How correlated is China's stock market to the real economy? Yes, that's a very good question. In the past, uh, if you look at China's market performance, it has no correlation with the real economy. In the last five or six years, uh, the Chinese economy was growing uh, at an average of around 8 to 9 percent, uh, but uh, the stock market continued to fall. So in a sense, uh, indeed, if you look at firms' financing condition, they rely a lot of financing from the banking system rather than the equity market. Uh, so indeed, the uh, Chinese uh, equity market uh, is not a reflection of what the real economy is doing. We need to watch carefully on Chinese banking system how banks is channeling the funding to the real economy. If that kind of credit channel is still moving and uh, is still smooth, I think uh, uh, the real economy could get a boost in the second, second half of the year. All right. Thank you so much for your insight. We're going to have to leave it there. Li Gang Liu, Chief Economist for the Greater China Region with ANZ Research. Thank you.